Chapter Sixteen of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter Sixteen. The Wife of Maximus. Four fifty four. Gibbon. In the time of the Emperor Valentinian, 454, Petronius Maximus, a wealthy senator of the Venetian family, who had been twice consul, was possessed of a beautiful wife. Her obstinate resistance served only to irritate the desires of Valentinian, and he resolved to accomplish them either by stratagem or force. Deep gaming was one of the vices of the court. The emperor, who by chance or contrivance, had gained from Maximus a considerable sum, uncourteously exacted his ring as a security for the debt, and sent it by a trusty messenger to his wife with an order in her husband's name that she should immediately attend the Empress Eudoxia. The unsuspecting wife of Maximus was conveyed in her litter to the imperial palace. The emissaries of her impatient lover conducted her to a remote and private bedchamber and Valentinian violated without remorse the laws of hospitality. Her tears when she returned home, her deep affliction, and her bitter reproaches against her husband, whom she considered as an accomplice of his own shame, excited Maximus to a just revenge. The desire of revenge was stimulated by ambition, and he might reasonably aspire by the free suffrage of the Roman Senate to the throne of a detested and despicable rival. Valentinian, who supposed that every human breast was devoid, like his own, of friendship and gratitude, had imprudently admitted among his guards several domestics and followers of Aetis. Two of these, of barbarian race, were persuaded to execute a sacred and honorable duty by punishing with death the assassin of their patron and their intrepid courage did not long expect a favorable moment. Whilst Valentinian amused himself in the field of Mars with the spectacle of some military sports, they suddenly rushed upon him with drawn weapons, dispatched the guilty Heraculus, and stabbed the emperor to the heart, without the least opposition from his numerous train, who seemed to rejoice in the tyrant's death. The injury which Maximus had received from the emperor Valentinian appears to excuse the most bloody revenge. And yet a philosopher might have reflected that, if the resistance of his wife had been sincere, her chastity was still inviolate, and that it could never be restored if she had consented to the will of the adulterer. A patriot would have hesitated before he plunged himself and his country into the inevitable calamities which must follow the extinction of the royal house of Theodosius. The imprudent Maximus disregarded these salutary considerations. He gratified his resentment and ambition. He saw the bleeding corpse of Valentinian at his feet, and heard himself saluted emperor by the unanimous voice of the Senate and the people. But the day of his inauguration was the last day of his happiness. He was imprisoned in the palace and after passing a sleepless night, he sighed that he had attained the summit of his wishes, and aspired only to descend from the dangerous elevation. The reign of Maximus continued about three months. Meanwhile, his wife, the cause of these tragic events, had been seasonably removed by death, and the widow of Valentinian was compelled to violate her decent mourning, perhaps her real grief and to submit to the embraces of a presumptuous usurper, whom she suspected as the assassin of her deceased husband. End of chapter 16